I'll talk a little bit about networks, and there's a lot going on, but one development I would like to point out was done by my colleagues at the Google X Lab where I worked on the car I'm going to tell you about later. These colleagues are putting up balloons in the stratosphere 20,000 meters up above the airplanes. The balloons just float. They don't have motors, but they can change their altitude. They can go up and down. And when they do, they can find winds at different speeds and different directions. And they can map these winds and keep the balloons up for 100 days, and that allows them to blanket economically an entire continent with balloons, providing radio connectivity to everyone at a low price. There are three billion people in the world who are connected to the network today. I assume most of you are probably among that number. But four billion are not, and those four billion will be. Their lives will be changed. They will have everything that we have seen, all the changes in our lives, and more importantly to you as manufacturers, they will become your customers. They will have the ability to see and order your products and understand how other people are using them and changing their lives. So if you thought it was great so far, it's going to double the number of people who can get to what you do through communications. I also want to mention to you something you're going to see later on today, telepresence robots. Now, Peter D, or sorry, Ray Kurzweil is going to appear in one of these telepresence robots, and I have done this myself. I attended a convention in London for three straight days while I was also speaking at a conference in the United States. Now, here you can see me on the robot talking to a member of the convention. Um, she is dressed like Lara Croft from Tomb Raider. Don't ask why, that's a long story. But I will tell you that this was not as good as going to the convention in person, but it was maybe about a third as good without the plane flight, the jet lag, and the hotel room. This is going to happen, and in your field, one thing that's really interesting is several manufacturing facilities in places like China are actually putting in these telepresence robots, which are allowing their customers to come and instantaneously visit the manufacturing lines at any time of day, look at what's going on, zoom in on things, inspect what's going on. So if you're worried about how global manufacturing has gotten, it's going to get more global and easy to make it global from this factor. There are other factors you'll hear about later that may reverse this, but it's going to become much more possible for you to interact more closely with remote manufacturing and remote supplier facilities as you move on in the world. Um, another technology that's going to make a big change is augmented reality, and we've seen some of this already with things like Google Glass. This is a video from the company Magic Leap, which has received $1.4 billion in private investment to make augmented reality glasses. Now, that's the largest private investment in history, but one thing you'll note when you watch this video shot through the glass is that the robot and the solar system were not in focus until the camera focused in on them. That's a remarkable achievement because while we can see 3D from having two eyes and by moving our heads, focus is the hardest thing to regenerate. And this gives people an impression so real <coughs> that the way they got that money is they brought investors in, told the investors to pick up a cup of coffee on the table. The investors went to pick it up and their hand went through it. They were fooled. They thought it was a real cup of coffee on the table. They took that hand and then they wrote a big check. So that's one way to raise a lot of money. This technology will not only allow the telepresence to get better, it will also improve exactly how people remotely maintain things and control things. In fact, we see demos of the early starts of this technology in our innovation lab today. Now, a lot of people ask me about something called the Internet of Things, and I have some bad news because I start off by saying there is no Internet of Things. You can't go to the store and buy a thing and say, I want to plug this into the Internet of Things, please. Right? That's a marketing phrase that somebody made up. But <coughs> they were covering the fact that there are real trends going on, three trends and three technologies making thousands of applications which are indeed connecting everything and will, in fact, create billions and billions of connected devices. The three technologies are sensors, computing, and networks. And the three trends are as they're getting cheaper, smaller, and lower power. Now, in sensors, you've seen, we talked about already today, if you've bought a phone recently, you're seeing all the new generations of sensors that are showing up. In computing, that's been going on with Moore's Law for a long time. But we've mentioned a couple of these small board computers, which are what everybody uses today when they want to prototype and experiment with new computing. I'd like to show you one of the latest ones to go out. Hod showed you a $35 Raspberry Pi. This is the new Raspberry Pi pictured next to the American $5 bill because not to show its size, but to show its cost. This computer would have made it on the supercomputer lists in the late 1980s, and here it is available for less than the price of a cup of coffee. 
Now, it's overpriced coffee, we have to agree. But nonetheless, we're talking about full board computers less than your latte, and the computer is going to get cheaper. The latte is probably going to get more expensive. This is the trend to look for, things getting so cheap that we can do new things with them we never would have conceived as economical before. Uh, in networking, there are so many standards. It's great. You, you don't even know which one to choose. That's a joke. <laughs> 